All right, welcome to today's tutorial. I'm Dr. Jude Ejepu. So today we're going to be looking at some transformations in order to accurately um, make a very good interpretations in your magnetic data. You know, the magnetic interpretation has uh, so many challenges and one of the most significant problems of this um, interpretation of magnetic uh, data is the distortion of the magnetic anomalies in the surveys, especially from low magnetic regions. That is where you have the magnetic inclination between plus or minus 30 degrees, that is plus 30 degrees at the north and minus 30 degrees at the south. And then the position, strike and polarity of the magnetic anomalies will be distorted relative to their source bodies at low magnetic latitudes. Now, the risk of not doing this transformation is that any interpretation based on this data will be incorrect as the position and strike will result in erroneous interpretation of the magnetic trends. And uh, thereby, when you want to develop uh, a geological model for the region, it will be poor and prone to so many errors. And this will lead to an incorrect assessment of the prospectivity of the particular region. Now, outside this low magnetic latitude between plus and minus 30 degrees, a reduction to the pool is necessary. And this can be used to accurately display the location of the strike and polarity of these magnetic anomalies. But however, when you are in low magnetic regions, when the inclination is below plus or minus 30 degrees, the RTP algorithm becomes unstable and it will produce anomalies spared in the north-south direction when compared to the TMI grid. Okay, we have our TMI grid here, so let us do the uh, reduce to pull transformation and we see how that plays out. So we're going to be using the MagMap step-by-step uh, -step filtering. If you don't have it, you can go to your GX here and uh, you load go to your GX here and you load a menu. Once you look at here, you type M to go to your mag map. Yes, you load this here, but we already loaded it. So we continue. So we do step by step filtering. First of all, we have to prepare our grid. So which grid we want to use? We want to use the Zungeru grid. And then um, what is the name of the output uh, that we want for the pre-process? So we name this pre. That will give us an idea of what we are doing. Let me capitalize this. Okay. And um, let's see. So uh, we can just leave everything at their default state here and we start doing that. It will take some time while it's taking. I'll pause this video and we'll continue. All right. That is done now. This is our, our grid that we have uh, pre processed. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to do the forward fast Fourier transformation and uh, we'll just leave uh, uh, this as, as it were here and we click OK. So it will do a fast Fourier transformation of this particular grid. And the next thing to do, remember I said we are using the step by step filtering. You can use the one, uh, the MagMap one step filtering, but for now we are going to be using this. So the next uh, stage is to define the filters. Now we have to choose a control file name. It will ask us to override this. You can say yes. Now the filter, the first filter we want to do is to do the reduce to magnetic pole. You can actually do more than. Uh, one type of filter here, we can do up to three, but for now we're going to limit ourselves to doing just one. Now it's asking for the date of the survey and the inclination or the declination. We can get that information by going to the database. So let's cancel here. Let's open this database and display this. Now if you come here, this has already been processed uh, in subsequent, the subsequent video described how to do this IGRF to get this data but I will do just a short video uh, to show how you just do a, an IGRF. So you come here and if you just um, click on this place and right click and show statistics, you will look at the mean value of the inclination, which is 4.2 here. Okay, let's do same for the declination. Now the declination is minus 2.1. That's the mean value. So we'll use these values to compute the to, to the define our filters so we'll go back to choosing this and we say yes so we are using reduced to magnetic pole 
the year this survey was flown was in 2007 and July 31st of 2007. Now the inclination we computed to be minus 4.2, while the declination we computed to be minus 2.1. Like I said, this is outside that range of values that we gave. So we are in a low magnetic region here. So we'll have that particular challenge using the reduced to pole transformation here. So we click on OK. This has accurately defined the filter that I want to use. So we'll go to the last step by applying this filter. Now the input transform file is already given. So what is the name of the output that we want? We want it to be Zungeru and um, want it to be the reduced to pole. Let's remember that this is the Zungeru TMI data that we are using. So the, okay, we can just leave this blank and we say Zungeru, this is the reference original file. So we'll click on okay. So this will perform the reduce to pull transformation. I will pause this video while it does that. Okay, now that is done. Like I said, you will see this particular, uh, this north to south particular uh, challenge that we are having. This uh, enforcing this north to south direction that we are having here, especially look at this region, we have that challenge. This, uh, uh, the anomaly is smeared along this north to south direction. We'll look at it, look at it here. All these places have got these challenges. So that is part of the problems that is inherent in doing this in low magnetic region. But still, we can still play around with it and see if we can use the amplitude inclination correction. And uh, if we come here to define filters, we'll use this too. You can play around with this and see what it gives you. We are still doing the reduced to magnetic to pull. This was flown on this date. Now the amplitude correction inclination, if you can play with several numbers, by default it is plus or minus 20 degrees depending on where you are. Where you are. So if you leave it blank, it will apply that. But uh, let's give it a value of 50 and see. That is the amplitude, uh, amplitude inclination correction that we want to apply. And let's see how it compares to this uh, um, uh, reduced to pole transformation that we have done here. So we'll go to step by step filter and apply filter. Now, this name will now be Zungeru um, RTP, and is, we apply the amplitude inclination correction. So we'll have it, and let's see how it compares um, to the first transformation we made. So I think that is done. Let us see windows tile vertically. Let's see how this plays out. Let's remove this. Okay. All right. Let's compare how all this looks like. We type vertically. We'll click here and see. Okay. Now, so this is how these things compare. You see that this particular north south smearing is actually reduced here. You know, so it's not as prominent as it is. So you can play around with this amplitude inclination correction and see how it does to your data, what it does to your data and how well it is taking. Remember, these things are very, very subjective. You need to know the geology of your region in order to accurately apply this. Now, there are several other methods that can be applied in doing this transformation. Another one is you do a grid math where you multiply these grids by minus one. That has been proposed by some people and um, we, we, we will do it and see. All it does is to invert the values of the grid, the TMI grid. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to go to this place and do a grid math and then um, we'll kick from this common tax here. We want to multiply this grid by a factor. So this is our G naught, G1 multiplied by minus one. And so that is what we want to do. So our G naught is the output that we want. So it will be uh, Zongero. Let's call that maths. And uh, or let's just use inverted IMV. And then the G1 
this the thing we want to apply to is this particular one so we click on ok and that should give us that particular so some people argue that you can just do that and invite invert the grid by multiplying by minus one some people argue that it saves a lot of geophysical wizardry and how far the north south of the magnetic equator does it does not hold good for this though it will be it will obviously depend on the size of the body and the error that you are willing to accept for this so let us take a look at them and see how it compares to what we are having here so we'll look at this and go to this place now let's use this tool to actually see how we are going to look at the values of this so the first grid that we're going to load is the Zungeru grid. Next, we load the Zungeru RTP. We load the AI and we load the IND. So we're going to look at the point values that we have in all these. So if we click on any part of this map, we'll see all these values showing up. So this map is kind of integrated and any value you point actually points to a particular value in all the maps. So what we have here is that we have this 46 nano teslas for the Zungeru grid, for the RTP, this is the value, for the amplitude inclination corrector, correction, this is the value, and for the inverse, this is the value that we have. We see that when we apply this amplitude inclination correction, we have the value very close to what we have in the original grid file. The Zungeru RTP is quite different. Now let's us check another place. Let's look at this anomaly that is here, that is striking. Now look at for the original grid, we have minus 124. For the RTP, we have 190. For the amplitude inclination correction, we have 165. And for the inverted uh, inversion that we made in the original grid, we have 124. So it all boils down to what you want to do. And in the next uh, upcoming video, we'll look at uh, another transformation algorithm that is the reduced to equator and see how it plays out. Some people argue that you can still perform the reduced to equator and then try to invert that reduced to equator and see if it will give you values very, very close to what we have here. So I think uh, that does it for now. See you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.